Hey everyone, Miss Go Electric here. I hope you had a happy Halloween. Today is Sunday, November 3rd, 2024, and this is The Current, weekly EV news in about 10 minutes. There was an abundance of news this week, so let's get right to it. Lucid Motors has provided pricing and timeline details related to their Gravity SUV. The top tier trim level named Grand Touring will start at $94,900 with production set to begin this year. This version promises a range of over 440 miles on a single charge and delivers over 800 horsepower. They've said the more affordable Touring trim will start at $79,900 and go into production at some point in late 2025. Gravity will feature the next generation of Lucid's ultra-compact powertrain technology. An evolution of their 900-volt electrical architecture is said to be capable of providing 200 miles of range in about 15 minutes of DC fast charging, and they plan to incorporate a native NAX port in 2025. The three-row Lucid Gravity accommodates up to seven passengers and includes about 120 cubic feet of cargo space. The stated payload capacity is over 1,500 pounds, and it will have a towing capacity rated at 6,000 pounds. Available features include an augmented reality head-up display, Halo Secure System with camera recording for incident and anti-theft protection, their Zero Gravity Optional Air Suspension Package, and massaging front seats with heating and cooling. Customer orders for the Lucid Gravity are set to open on November 7th, with delivery priority for current Lucid Air owners. In 2023, Lucid produced 8,428 of their sole model. About 2,400 of those went unsold. They expect to produce 9,000 by the end of 2024. If they sell all of them, they'll be roughly in line with many other full-size luxury and premium electric sedans on the market. The starting price has been reduced to less than $70,000 to accommodate that forecast. The brand is now selling in Saudi Arabia, which owns the majority of Lucid through their public investment fund. Additionally, the Saudi government has committed to purchasing 100,000 Lucids over the next 10 years. Thousands have already been sent to Saudi Arabia and several have been photographed in public service roles. To help with brand awareness and experience, Lucid recently launched a partnership with Canadian resort brand, the Four Seasons Hotels. Facilities will offer guests complimentary use of Lucid vehicles for hotel guests to drive themselves or they can opt for a chauffeur. There are 130 Four Seasons properties worldwide, which means the company can easily allocate hundreds of unsold vehicles to the project. This is a sensible partnership, which will certainly get the right customers interacting with their product. If you follow the money, the origins of the deal become fairly obvious as well. Back in 2021, Tesla short seller Bill Gates purchased a controlling stake of about 70% of the hotel chain. He bought the business from Saudi Arabia's Kingdom Holdings, which still owns more than 20%. The Saudi Public Investment Fund owns a large stake in Kingdom Holdings. Lucid's publicly traded stock price is down 50% year to date. Back in March, the Saudi Public Investment Fund poured another billion into the company for a total of over $8 billion at the time. Two weeks ago, Lucid raised another $1.75 billion selling new stock. The company has a bit more than one year's worth of operating capital based on their current burn rate. They reported a loss of more than $2.8 billion last year. Do you think the Gravity SUV will deliver Lucid's first profits in 2025? Speaking of Middle Eastern ownership, supercar manufacturer McLaren Automotive is being sold out of the McLaren Group. The seller is the Bahrain government's sovereign wealth fund, and the new buyer is the government of Abu Dhabi's investment consortium, CYVN. CYVN Holdings owns most of China-based EV automaker NIO, along with 47 and Gordon Murray Technologies. Gordon Murray Technologies is the EV division of boutique supercar firm Gordon Murray Automotive. 
Gordon Murray was McLaren's designer from the late 80s to early 2000s for their Formula One cars and the legendary F1 road car. 4.7 is a premium EV startup established in 2022 by CYVN, which intends to produce vehicles using technology licensed from NEO by 2030. It looks like after many years of producing plug-in hybrid supercars, the puzzle pieces are coming together for McLaren to deliver an all-electric model to compete with the Remots. Perhaps it will be based on NEO's fantastic EP9. I used to work for McLaren as an educator, and this story is of particular interest. As the story develops, I'll keep you updated here on this show. Back in 2014, word leaked that smartphone manufacturer Apple was working on a car. The effort called Project Titan was an open secret in the tech and automotive worlds. China's answer to Apple, a company called Xiaomi, must have had an ear to the ground and they began working on a car of their own. This year, Apple shut down Project Titan. Unfortunately, the project failed. Xiaomi succeeded by producing this SU7 four-door sedan. SU7 production began in late December of 2023 and the company ramped production faster than any EV we've ever seen. Delivery started in March and they produced more than 70,000 units by the end of September. During the same period, Porsche sold less than 15,000 of their very similar looking Taycans. The SU7 is currently being produced at a rate of about 20,000 per month, and that is apparently not enough to keep up with demand. This week, Chinese media reported that further expansion of the factory is underway, with a completion target for mid-2025. They aim to double the production rate. Xiaomi also grabbed headlines this week by crushing lap times set by Porsche, Remots, Tesla, and Lucid at the Nürburgring. The 1500 horsepower tri-motor Xiaomi SU7 Ultra prototype lapped the ring in 6 minutes and 46.874 seconds, even in wet conditions, including a brief power loss. Did I mention this is a four-door EV? For comparison, the VW IDR holds the overall electric record with a time of 6 minutes and 5.336 seconds. The fastest ever lap is held by Porsche with their 919 Hybrid Evo, clocking in at 5 minutes and 19.546 seconds, set back in 2018. Remot's official production EV record will stand until the SU7 Ultra goes into production, which is scheduled to happen in March. As we've previously reported, starting Wednesday, Chinese-built electric vehicles heading to Europe will be subject to tariffs as high as 45.3%. Those tariffs are intended to persuade automakers to move their manufacturing to Europe or its trade partners. China's Ministry of Commerce has reportedly advised EV makers, including BYD, SAIC, and Geely to stop investment in EU countries which supported the tariffs or abstained from voting. They've requested that investment be made only with countries that voted against the tariffs. In the vote, 10 EU members backed tariffs, 5 voted against, and 12 abstained. China is the world's leading producer of automobiles and their EV brands are gaining momentum. BYD, NEO, Xpeng, Zeker, and many other Chinese OEMs posted all-time record EV deliveries in October. BYD sold over a half a million vehicles last quarter alone, dwarfing the entirety of U.S. electric vehicle sales over the same period. NEO's new economy EV brand, Anvo, delivered 4,000 of their new L60 in its first month. This represents a rapid production ramp. Meanwhile, several European EV brands are down year over year, with BMW and Porsche down about 30%, and Volkswagen and Mercedes by about 15%. In the US, there's a 100% tariff on Chinese-made EVs. Do you think the tariffs will limit China's EV dominance long enough for American and European brands to catch up and compete globally? Speaking of Chinese EVs, Geely's sub-brands Volvo and Polestar now have access to over 17,800 Tesla supercharging dispensers. Both brands use a Google infotainment system, which will soon incorporate compatible supercharger locations as well. Volvo says their North American charging standard adapter will be complementary to anyone who buys a 2025 EX90, EX40, or EC40. 
Existing Volvo EV owners can now order an adapter from their Volvo dealership or service center with a price tag of $230 and shipping to retails starting November 18th. Polestar says it will also be selling adapters through local service centers, with deliveries expected in mid-November. On Friday, the first South Carolina-built Polestar 3 was delivered to a customer. Previously, all Polestars sold in America were built in China. As expected, tariffs had greatly diminished the brand's ability to be profitable in America. Do you think these tailwinds will boost Polestar and Volvo sales in the U.S.? Ford Motor Company has also been churning out NAX adapters for their customers. They've recently announced a partnership with Lectron to increase production and pick up the pace of that rollout. Around the same time, Ford leadership shared their plans to shut down the F-150 Lightning line at their Rouge Electric Vehicle Center for nearly two months. Ford repeated their familiar statement, we continue to adjust production for an optimal mix of sales growth and profitability. Translation, their independent franchise dealerships have pushed back and do not want more F-150 Lightnings on the lots. I was honored to be at the factory when Ford began production. Optimism was off the charts, as the company aimed for the production of 2 million electric vehicles annually by 2026. That would have represented about one-third of the company's global volume. They wanted to produce 50% EVs by 2030. The F-150 Lightning was originally slated for production of 70,000 units annually. During the summer of 2023, the plant underwent an expansion to facilitate an increased capacity of 150,000 units annually. Back when the Lightning first started rolling off the line, I published a tour of the factory accompanied by our friend Sandy Monroe. It shows the fascinating details about how those trucks are put together. If you want to check that out, I'll leave a link in the description below. Last year, Ford sold 24,165 Lightnings in the United States. As of October, they sold 22,807 so far this year. They've revised their production forecast downward twice this year. They've cut prices and launched a new complimentary charging equipment and installation program, but their electric truck competitors are offering superior specifications. Their electric vehicle Model E division is expected to lose $5 billion this year. Ford CEO Jim Farley has indicated that their next generation products will be much more competitive. Until they arrive in 2027, what do you think Ford should do to improve sales? Well, that wraps up today's episode. If you found value in the current, please consider sharing a link to this episode online. We need to reach a larger audience in order to continue producing this show every week. If you haven't already, I'd like to invite you to join me on other social media platforms, including X, LinkedIn, and Instagram for up to the minute insights and exclusive coverage. Thank you for watching and until next week, drive, fly, ride, go electric.